In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist on this Monday of Holy Week. Welcome to all of you following through the live streaming service on YouTube, and welcome if you are watching this service later on in our YouTube channel. We begin singing our first hymn, hymn number 83, Glory Be to Jesus. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ himself carried up our sins in his body to the tree so that free from sin we might live for righteousness by his wounds we have been healed let us confess our sins almighty god our, our heavenly father, father we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence through weakness through our own deliberate fault we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son jesus christ who died for us forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name amen O oh god you know my foolishness and my sins are not hidden from you lord have mercy lord have let not the flood overwhelm me, nor the depths swallow me up. Let not the pit shut its mouth upon me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Hear me, O Lord, as your loving kindness is good. Turn to me as your compassion is great. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to life everlasting, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, send your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also we may partake us of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. From the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name, my glory. I give no other nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the book of Hebrews. But when Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance because a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She brought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So as we begin this journey of Holy Week, the Gospel that, is, that was just proclaimed this morning, it is a beautiful image of intimacy. What a treasure. Just before going up to Jerusalem, just before Jesus' passion, death and resurrection, we heard in the Gospel that he was hid from sight. He never walked in public anymore. He stayed with friends, Martha, Mary and Lazarus, who had been raised from the dead. And there they are, having a meal together. Martha once more serving at the table, as we read as well early on in the Gospel, how Martha was so worried on hosting Christ and making everything ready for the great host. And Mary was sitting there on Jesus' feet, listening to the Master speaking. Another scene today, a scene of intimacy, of privacy, Jesus, as we do, needed that friendship, that support, that moment of refreshment, of being with his loved ones, the closer circle of friends. Now, how often do we also meet family and close friends around us and that we have that moment of intimacy where cameras are not allowed in when it's just us and it is our true selves? Today, we had to pick a picture into that moment of intimacy. And we see different discussions going in when Mary goes and opens the bottle of this very expensive oil for anointment. You can almost smell the oil when you hear what happened and how she anointed Jesus' feet and then wiped the feet with her hair. And then the tensions. Could that not have been sold to get some money? Well, yes, of course. But you always have the poor. You will not always have me. Jesus also had a treat before his passion and death. As human and divine, he needed that close circle of friends and that moment of intimacy. There's so much we can pick from this beautiful gospel from John. And I think that lots of times a picture and an image 
works much better than a thousand words. So I've selected a series of art that I will show with you now, and share with you now, uh, of some modern art that depicts this moment that we just heard in the Gospel. I'm not going to comment because I think it's better that you look at the picture and interpret what you can see in the picture, bearing in mind what we just heard in the story, how Mary, with, with the oil, anointed Jesus' feet and then dried the feet with her hair. And that's also that close, of, close circle of friends around this scene. Mary performed a beautiful act of love, humility and service towards Jesus. That later on Jesus himself would do with his disciples during the Last Supper, washing their feet as a symbol of a servant of those who serve, of humility, of ultimate love. Finish with this poem by Malcolm Garrett called The Anointing at Bethany. Come close with Mary, Martha, Lazarus, so close the candles stir with their soft breath and kindle heart and soul to flame within us. Lead by these mysteries of life and death, for beauty now begins the final movement in quietness, an intimate encounter, 
the alabaster jar of precious ointment is broken open for the world's true lover. The whole room richly fills to feast the senses with all the yearning such a fragrance brings. The heart is mourning, but the spirit dances. Here, at the very centre of all things, here, at the meeting place of love and loss, we all foresee and see beyond the cross. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to our Heavenly Father. Lord God of our salvation, hear us as we pray for our fellow Christians, that this Holy Week may bring courage and hope to the whole Church. Bless all bishops committed to your service, particularly Helen Ann, our bishop, Save your people and bless your inheritance. Support and strengthen all who are tempted to lapse. Arouse the indifferent and careless and renew them in their first love. Lord, in your mercy, give peace to the world that all nations may grow in mutual trust and goodwill that justice and freedom may increase, and the whole earth live to praise your glory. Lord, in your mercy, be merciful to all who are suffering through sickness, poverty, hunger and oppression. Hear the cry of those in misery and in need. Show them your mercy and heal their afflictions. and grant us a wise-hearted love in the relief of human distress. Lord, in your mercy, bless all those with whom our lives are bound up, our fellow Christians in this place, for our church family, for our neighbours, for our families, for our friends, for those who live around us. Let your loving kindness be upon us. Lord, in your mercy, and be merciful to all those who have died. Show them your way, O Lord, that they may see your goodness in the land of the living. Lord, in your mercy, by his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard us and keep us, and make his holy passion bring us at the end to be numbered with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with Martha, 
Lazarus and Mary, and all the redeemed, in glory everlasting. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Sing our offertory hymn, hymn number 90, for sacred head so wounded.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, this gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you these as sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Paul, and all your saints and martyrs, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O Heavenly Father, forever and ever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humble yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work your praise and glory. Amen. Sing our final hymn, hymn number 70, Lord Jesus, Think of Me. The Lord be with you. Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.